Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and this is the second video on life cycle hook. So in my previous video, we have already talked about constructor and ng on in it, where to use which one. Okay, so just to give a very quick recap, like constructor is basically used to handle any dependency injection in your component and to handle any initialization logic, you need to use ng on in it. ng on in it life cycle hook only call once, fine. So I recommend to watch my previous video if you haven't visited it yet. So now in today's topic, let's talk about another lifecycle hook and that is ng on changes. So this method is called once on components creation and then every time the changes are detected in one of the component input property. So to implement lifecycle hooks, I have created one hook component and another is hook child component right so from this hook component i will invoke this hook child component like this when you go to hook child you can see constructor and ng on it is already here i can do console.log just to make sure that particular lifecycle hook is working and now let me implement ng on changes lifecycle hook because this is what we are going to discuss now as I told you to implement any lifecycle hook, we have to first import its interface, right? We have to implement its interface. So we have on changes interface. As I told you, every interface will give you one specific method, prefix ng and the interface name. So it should be now ng on changes. So ng on changes method we have to implement. So this is my lifecycle hook. So if I do something like this console.log ng on changes called and keep your console tab open and now try to understand this one it is just showing me constructor called and ng on init call. Beside of this you can see here I have also called ng on changes but I am not able to see that it is even calling. The reason for that ng on changes is a part of lifecycle hook but it also belongs to the data bound property. So until unless I am not passing any input property from parent to child component this lifecycle hook will never call. Even I mentioned it like this. So if you want to check or if you want to execute this lifecycle hook your component should have some input property. Without input property it would never execute. So this is the first thing you need to remember. So ng on changes come into the picture when any input property is there for the component and any input property we have passed from parent to child. Before I talk further, let me first pass any input property to this component. So move to the parent component and let me have some input field here. So first let's create this function in its component file to handle the data that we entered in the input field I can do something like this right so let me first create one property here which will hold this input property so what I'll do I'll do something like this whenever handle data will call and this method will execute whenever I will type something in the text box the blur event will execute and invoke this function and I will get the data e.target.value and initialize my data property. So now this data property I will pass from parent to child. Just we have to pass it from here. So what I am doing, I am doing some property binding like this and passing data. Data is a property that this component has this one. So now my parent component is passing some data to the child component with the help of this parent data property. So now to receive this data into the child component, what we have to do? We have to create one input decorator, right? We have talked about this. So in the child component, I have to create one input decorator that will point to that parent data property. Now this parent data property will hold the data which will come from that text box. So now my parent is passing some property to the child component so this is the input property right now if you check can you see here at this time I can see a call of ng on changes 
So first it will invoke constructor. Then if any input property is there in the child component, then first it will invoke ng on changes and afterward it will invoke ng on init. So now you can say that ng on changes will fire before ng on init and every time the parent data update from its parent component. So if I type something here and try to update the value. So try to notice the difference in the console tab. So as soon as I leave the focus from this text box, you can see again ng on changes will call. This time ng on init didn't call, right? So this is the difference you need to understand that whenever my component get render, it always first call constructor as you can see. After that, if is then any input property, so ng on changes will call and afterward it will invoke ng on init and after this if that input property get changed or update by the parent component so in that case ng on init will not call again it will call ng on changes and that's it so this is about the execution now how you can handle that in the ng on changes see when we talk about ng on changes it basically take one parameter of type simple changes. So ng on changes it receive a simple changes object as a parameter which contain the information regarding which of the input properties has changed. So if you want to have some specific logic whenever any input property change then you can do your logic in this lifecycle hook. So let's see how we can do that as I told you it takes one parameter you can give it any name that would be of type of simple changes. Okay. So now if you do changes here, you can check it will track the input property whenever it get updates. So you can see initially uh, it is pointing to parent data because from parent to child we are passing this parent data. So ng on change will keep a track of parent data property and it would be of type simple change. Okay, as, soon, as of now there is nothing so that's why there is no current value and first value. So as soon as I update ng on change will run again and here if you see the parent data property it has current value as hello. So you can have some logic based on that. If I do again some update you can see again ng on change will call. So parent data has changed its current value and previous value. So previous value was hello now the current value is good evening. So based on this previous value and current value you can have your logic. You can do some logical thing based on your requirement. So this is about ng on changes. So I hope this uh, this life cycle hook is also clear. So now let me compare this ng on changes and ng on init. ng on init basically call only once when the component is initialized that I have shown you right. And ng on changes get called before ng on init. And whenever a component in bound input property is changed from parent component. So remember that ng on changes is specific to bound inputs on the component. This means if you don't have any input properties on a child then ng on changes will never get called. That is also I have shown you right. So ng on init is specific to component being initialized. ng on changes is specific to input properties on a child component. Now the question is when should you use ng on changes. So use ng on changes whenever you want to detect change from variable decorated by input. Remember that only change from the parent component will trigger this function. Whenever there will be any change from the parent component on that bound property only then this ng on change will run. Second point to remember that the changes from parent still update the child value even without implementing ng on changes okay so ng on changes is not something that is blocking the update of child component no ng on changes will simply add the benefit of tracking those changes with previous and current value if you will not have this lifecycle hook still you will be able to access this parent data but you will not be have access of previous and current value so if you want to have some control what was the previous value, what is the current value and do you want to have some another logic based on this then you have to use ng on changes. This is a very basic example. Now let's add one more logic here. Move to the parent component. So instead of simple this property let me have object that I want to update. 
So I'm giving a very, sim adding a very simple form here. I will add ng model here just to update its value. And I want to handle this product on a click of button, okay. So I will add one button also. This is a very basic form, okay. Nothing to do with parent to child relationship as of now. So first let me create a logic of this component. So first thing you need to do, you need to create this update product method in its TS file. And we need to create these two property name and price. So we can quickly do that as well. We can create two property name and price. And we can have one function here. Let me create one product class just to handle this uh, product with a specific type. Okay, we can have one product class here. And I can simply create one TypeScript class product that will have name property and price property. So first import this class here in its TS file. So here I can create a class uh, object of this class. So I will have one variable product that would be of type my product class. Now what I can do whenever that click button on my browser, whenever I click on this button, okay, there is something wrong with the form. I will correct this one. So whenever I click on this update product, this function will call, okay. So what I want, I want to update my object, this product object. So how I can do that? I can say this dot product, this class has two property, name and price. So what I can do, I can initialize my this dot name and update my product object, right? So I can do the same with price. So first let me fix that issue. The form was not created properly here. I didn't close this input tag. Save the changes and back to the browser. So it is showing me some product issue. Let me see. Okay, so here the type of price is also I have mentioned string. So that should be number, right? So now this error is gone. We can validate it again. So now it looks fine. Okay, so now instead of simple text box, we have our object uh, that we have bound it. So what I want now that whenever I enter any product name and price and click on update product, my this product object will update with the new product detail. So that object now I want to pass from parent to child. Okay. So the way I have passed a very simple property like this, now I want to pass a, another property, but this time it would be a object. So I can do something like this, that this time I'm passing my product object from parent to child. So now let's add one more input decorator for this product. So move to the child component. And the way we have parent data, similarly we can have this one. But this type, this product is not a type, type of string, it is an object of type product. So now move to the browser and open the console tab. So this time, uh, just try to understand the execution. We have constructor call and we have ng on changes. Uh, why ng on changes? Because this child component has the input property, but this time it has multiple property. It has two input property, parent data and product. When you click on this one, you can see it's a separate object. Multiple objects are there. Every object will have its own previous and current value that you can access. So now let's see if I make a change on my first input property, that is a type parent data, okay? It's a simple string type. So as soon as I enter here, you will notice that ng on change is run for parent data, okay? But now let's talk about product name. If I do some changes here, I say product name is uh, laptop and price is one, two, three. And click on update product. So can you see here? For this change, my ng on changes is not working. So in this case, we need to understand that on changes doesn't fire. 
the the issue is that because ng on change use a different technique for the comparison the change detector use a triple strict equality operator for detecting changes to the input property so for primitive data type like string the above comparison works perfectly fine but in the case of object like this product this will fail for array or object the strict checking means that only the reference are checked since the reference to the product stay the same in the angular and that's the reason the on change hook will not call so this is the issue okay so now there are two possible solution of this issue we can return a new reference or new reference to the product object so that it always point to a new object or new reference so then it understand that something has changed then it will work so when i say return a new reference means when you check here as you can see here i am only updating the property of my product object but i'm not returning any new reference so what you can do you can update or you can return a new object every time so in that case the reference of the object will always change so in that case ng on change will understand that its reference has been changed so now if you move and uh, try to update any change so now if you do some change here click on this button this time it will work because it's doing a dirty checking so it will always check for a new reference so it will work but if you don't want to do this way you don't want to return a new reference every time you want that if any of the property change detect the change so in that case we have another life cycle hook which is called ng do check in such scenario where angular fails to detect the changes to the input property the do check allows us to implement our custom change detection let me show you how we can do that move to the child component and let's implement do check interface and here i can say ng do check so if i simply say ng do check it will not take any parameter okay you need to remember that ng on changes is the only life cycle hook which takes parameter so now i want to detect the changes of my product component right so here i can say this dot product and now let's check it again if i do some change here you will notice ng on change call and ng do check will always call right and if i do some product change like uh, laptop and price and click on update product so you can see here ng on change will not run it will simply run ng do check and it will update my product detail as you can say it is running for every change any every time when, when that property will change okay so you can have some logic here written but the demo is just to show you like ng do check will run every time there will be any change in this data bound property and you want to handle those changes which is not handled by ng on change and you want to detect your change on your own so in that case you can have this ng do check so this is the difference between ng on changes and ng do check so ng on change will only execute once for the input property first of all so ng on change now you can conclude this topic by saying like ng on change will trigger every time an angular detector change to a data bound input property but we also notice that ng on change will not fire when the input property is an array or object because angular use a dirty checking to compare the property so in such scenario where angular fails to detect the change to the input properties the do check allows us to implement our custom change detection so this is about ng on changes and ng do check so i hope the difference and the usage of both life cycle hook is clear and this is all for today so in the next video we are going to talk about the other life cycle hook method so this is all for today i hope it is clear and we have covered ng on changes ng on in it and ng do check and the rest of the life cycle hook method we will cover in the next video till then keep learning stay safe and i will see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye